Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. Uh, I've been helping institutional investors out for the past 30 years. Uh, most of the time, they know what stocks they want to own, and I help them with the timing of either the entry or the exit. Uh, but I also help them identify stocks in their universe that look like they're about to emerge and do something a little bit more important or something that looks like it really could uh, outperform. And so I've created a number of different methodologies and strategies. What I want to go over really quickly today is uh, just give you an idea of some of the things that I use to help refine the list of stocks that I, that I identify uh, if I'm looking to go put some money to work or make some investments. So uh, let's get into the charts. First, I just want to make sure you know this channel is for educational purposes only. Uh, you sh it shouldn't be construed as financial advice. Um, the ideas and strategies should never be used without first assessing your own financial situation, your personal situation. So I just want to make sure I hit that. And let's go right into the specifics of what I am really looking for. I'm going to show you how I go about doing it, but I want to make sure you understand what is what is in uh, the back of my mind and what I'm trying to identify. So on the top of this chart, I've got the lower time frame. This can be any two time frames you want. The examples I'm going to use for the most part are going to be the monthly as the higher time frame and the lower time frame is the weekly. And I do a lot of screening for this type of uh, setup. These are the stocks that you can buy and put away and uh, you know, you're probably going to end up holding them for a pretty decent amount of time, anywhere from six to 12 months on average. And uh, it's possible you could hold them for longer periods. We've held some in, uh, in some of the accounts as, as long as two or three years. So it, it's, there's no set time frame necessarily. But generally speaking, if you use a monthly and a weekly as the, as the two time frames, uh, you're, you're going to be in them for a little bit of time. So what I'm looking at and uh, it, what I really want you to get uh, an understanding of the higher time frame, you either have two choices. Um, the higher time frame is either a low ADX pattern or it, it's a strong ADX pattern that's pulling back. So it had a big reading on the ADX and now it's coming down. And it, it, this will make more sense to you as I show you some examples. But essentially on the higher time frame, I'm looking for either a low ADX quiet period going sideways for a long time or I'm looking for a, uh, a strong, powerful trend that has pulled back and gone through a correction. And so one of the things I wanted to mention, this green line I've got on this chart is, is essentially the 18 month line in this example, if I'm using a monthly and a weekly. Again, this can be used with any two time frames. You could do this with a weekly and a daily, a daily and an hourly, however you wanna do it. But in this example, I'm just gonna say the green line is the monthly 18 in both cases. And so you want to make sure you've gotten through that line. And I'll, uh, I'll bring that up again later, but I just want to make sure that's uh, part of what you're thinking about on the higher time frame. On the lower time frame, I'm looking for two things, either the pattern. There's two different patterns out of my book, uh, Invest Like a Pro, which is there's a low ADX pattern, which you're kind of buying a breakout. And then there's the uh, opposing trend that where the uh, 18 is crossing down below the 40 and you get sort of a downward move, a counter trend move to the bigger trend. So these are really the two things I'm trying to identify on the lower time frame. And so let's go ahead and, and then actually I want to show one other thing that I think is important. So there's two different ways you can change the trend around. I'm giving you one that I think is, I've noticed a lot based on the fact that we went through a bear market and then we reversed so quickly. A lot of stocks have done this. On the left side, you've got the bear, the bull alert. And that's where you go from a new low to a new high, meaning I took out a swing low and then I immediately reversed and went straight up and took out a swing high. And I'm going to give you some examples of this. And in this case, what I'm trying to do is look on the right side. I'm waiting for the higher bottom to develop where the green arrow is. And essentially, I'm looking for some type of a consolidation or pullback. And if it holds and turns up from there, I'm really going to be interested in that pattern. So this is a little bit different than the, the previous slide. Um, th these two pat these patterns that I'm looking for on the two time frame is is extremely important. 
This is something that I think you need to be on the lookout for to know that a, a reversal is taking place. Um, I'm going to get into some examples, but first, let me just show you one other thing that I think is key. So the higher time frame 18MA, you want to use that sort of as a barometer of where you are. If you're going through and looking at different, let's say you have 30 or 40 stocks that meet your uh, filter or screen that, that says uh, it meets some type of technical criteria. Go to the next higher time frame. And again, I'm going to just say that if I'm looking at a weekly chart, the next higher time frame would be the monthly 18. And I want to make sure if I see something that looks attractive on a weekly chart that I am not buying right or I'm not looking to buy right underneath a declining 18 MA. And then on the right side, I want to make sure if something looks good on a weekly chart, I want to make sure I'm not stretched away from the 18 month moving average. So Again, apply this to all different types of time frames, but I think if you follow these three, th these three, what I've just gone over on these three slides, uh, you know, look for the lower time frame patterns that are going sideways or counter trend to the higher time frame, and then understand whether you've got low ADX or strong ADX on the higher time frame, and then we're looking for a reversal of trend. Uh, and the way that to reverses sometimes is when you go from a new low to a new high. And again, because of what we've gone through in this market environment, this pattern has been pretty pre prevalent. Uh, and then finally, let's just make sure that when we look at stocks, we don't we don't look to buy right into the next time frames 18 MA. Uh, let's start looking at some individual stocks. And first thing I want to do is say I run a couple different screens. One of the screens I run are the low ADX patterns where um, if you go and look at the weekly chart here on every one of these, the ADX, uh, let me just make sure you see this. The ADX is low on every one of these stocks, okay? it's I'm looking for stocks that have a low ADX pattern on the weekly. Now on the monthly chart, I really want to see either a really strong, powerful trend that is now pulling back to the 18 or in the area of the 18, or one that's crossing above the 18 for the first time and going sideways and has a low ADX pattern. So I'm, those are kind of the two main criteria when I'm looking for some big develop, some big pattern. And so I'm going to literally go through and give you some examples. I mean, I, I would go through it this fast. If you look at GM, so GM has low ADX on the weekly chart, you see this right here? That is low ADX right here That's at 13 um, on the weekly chart. But look at all the resistance. You've got that declining 18 month and look at all the price resistance. I mean, we just don't want to be involved in that. So next. for me, I'm just avoiding this and going on to the next stock. So I'm going to browse through a couple real quick. I mean, I don't see anything that's jumping off the screen to me. I literally will go through it this quickly. Now, when you get started, you're not going to be able to do that. And you want to make sure you're focusing on these two lower time frames. If you're looking for big trends, start with the monthly and the weekly and see if you can identify something that really has a good pattern. Now, I like what's going on on FOLD. It's crossed above the 18 on the monthly. It's consolidating back towards the weekly, but it, it's still kind of stretched away from the monthly line. So I probably would like to see this consolidate a little bit. And I, I don't know, I look at it sort of like it's a little bit, if you look at the right chart, that's the second no-no. It's a little too far away um, on the monthly chart. It's just a little too far away from the 18 MA. So as I go through, if I see something that I really think is attractive, I'm going to throw it over into my watch list. And so I'll go through and I'm just going to give you an example of some of the ones that have met recently. So GBTC, actually, this is the Bitcoin trust that trades like a stock. It's Grayscale Bitcoin Trust uh, and GBTC. And I, if you look at Bitcoin, actually, the price action has been improving and it looks sort of interesting. Uh, but look at what's taken place on the monthly ADX. We've spent all this time consolidating for a couple of years and the ADX is just getting back to 31. Uh, on the monthly time frame. And then on the weekly, we had low ADX for a long time here. And now we're finally sort of emerging out of this pattern with a pretty strong move. And then if you notice what took place just in the last week or two, 
Uh, we had the pullback on the daily chart and we had our opposing trend entry, um, you know, on the hourly. So, you know, this is sort of like all four time frames working together. Um, I, I, again, I'm not necessarily looking at this from a standpoint of, you know, uh, of saying that this is a time to buy this this second, but it's a stock to watch. If it pulls back on the weekly and we get some type of a pullback closer to the 18 on the weekly chart, then we could have an opposing trend set up on the daily again. Uh, so uh, let's just start going through. Now, I wanted to bring up Square because Square did this pattern, this bull alert pattern. If you notice, it went from a new low to a new high. If we go back and look at what's taking place here. It went from a new low here and then went straight to a new high. Now, what didn't happen is it never made the higher low and then turned up. And you gotta understand, the way I look at things is you, if you look at enough stocks, you're gonna have plenty of opportunity and you're gonna miss some. It, it's okay, you don't have to catch every single trend. If the stock's moving and it, it leaves on without you, it's it's okay, There's there's plenty of others out there. Uh, let's take a look at DKNG. This is DraftKings. Big, strong move on the weekly chart, and it's been consolidating back to the 18 MA. 18 above the 40, both lines rising. And then if we go to the uh, daily chart, we've got sort of a low ADX pattern developing. And I think if this can continue to consolidate and stay low and then come up through here through this resistance line, that would actually be a pretty bullish sign. It's, it's definitely a stock to keep an eye on. Uh, DBX Dropbox was something I was watching. It never actually got going uh, above the breakout level of 24, so there was no trigger. So there's setups and then there's triggers. So I have a, my watch list are a bunch of stocks that are potentially set up. Like they have the setup that I'm looking for, but if they don't trigger, I might never get in them. And I think you have to discern there's a much, there's a huge difference between a setup and a uh, trigger. And we're going to go more into that over time, but I want to make sure you know that uh, right off the bat. Uh, YUMC has shown low ADX on the monthly and low ADX on the weekly. And, and now the daily is starting to get going. And I think the, the weekly is actually going to cross and get the ADX going as well. So it's the type of stock you want to probably let it push a little higher and then watch for the next pullback. And it'll be some form of an opposing trend trigger on the uh, daily chart. And so one of the things that I think you need to understand and get the point across here is that you have to have patience. You're, every stock you are looking at is not going to be ready to go. You can't just buy it willy nilly and just say, I'm, I'm going to own this. You have to wait for the proper setup, uh, the proper triggers to uh, kick in. FCX is very interesting because it made such a big move. I'd love to see this go through, um, you know, a pullback like this and then turn up and make that higher low, as I was talking about in the uh, one of the earlier charts. So this is the pattern from a new low to a new high. It's taking place in SCCO, which is a copper, and the copper uh, futures is doing the exact same thing. So if this can fill in a little bit and let these moving averages catch up, I think this could be very intriguing. It's one to watch. Um, eBay kind of got away. It's made a huge move, a lot of strength. It's in a power trend based on the weekly. Uh, I think if we can get a little bit more consolidation closer to the 18 week, it's probably worth uh, monitoring. Uh, CLDR is pretty interesting to me. Uh, the monthly chart is really just turning things around. The 18 month is about to flatten out and turn things around. Uh, we've shown some improvement on a weekly basis. If you look at the trend line, you broke the trend line, you rallied up, you came down and tested and held, and now we went to another new high. So I kind of consider the trend reversing on the weekly. What's missing now is we've pulled back to the 18 and the 40 on the weekly, but we have not triggered on the daily chart. So, you know, I want to see this kind of work its way back up through 12, 12 and change, something like that. And then if it were to trigger, I'd put a stop in underneath here. And the way you want to do this, if you're going to do this type of trading, you want to take the different, the distance between your entry point and your stop point, figure out how much money you want to risk, and then divide that by the distance between these two lines. So you figure out how much you're risking in the stock. Let's say it's a dollar and you want to risk uh, $200 in, in a specific trade, 
then you'd buy 200 shares. So it's as simple as that. Make sure you do the math though. Risk 1% on your trades and you will stick around. You will be around long enough to learn how to do this and get a lot better at it. Uh, let's just look at a couple more. ABBV, um, it's got a little bit of pullback risk on the monthly, but I do like the way this is setting up on the weekly and the daily. ZS, Zscaler has made a really big move on the weekly. I'd like to see it consolidate back towards the weekly line, but this is something to watch. It's made a really strong move and it's in a power trend on the weekly. Um, Baba is consolidating very nicely after breaking out. Uh, you know, if you notice all these stocks that I'm showing you, they're all above their 18s on the monthly and they're above their 18s on the weekly. And, and so, I want you to understand and just keep this in mind. I know you want to buy low and sell high, but think about maybe buying high and selling higher. You know, I mean, you don't have to buy something at a 52 week low to make money in the market. We make most of our gains are stocks that are breaking out, hitting a new 52 week high, sometimes an all time high. And it's, it's, it's at the highest price it's ever been, and yet it continues to trend. That's the power of ADX, and it's something you need to get used to. If you want to start buying right, you got to make sure you're looking for stocks that are showing some form of strength. So I want to make sure I make that point. Uh, CCC has kind of taken off, although this had a really good setup on a pullback to the 18 and the 40, and then you had the nice opposing trend entry around 23. Uh, BMRN is really interesting. Look at the size of the base on the uh, monthly chart. And the weekly has made this big move and it needs to consolidate back towards the 18 on the weekly. But uh, this is definitely another one to watch. Um, I'm going to pull up a stock that I think will give us a lot of insight. So there's two different ways I mentioned earlier. If, if we go back to the initial slide, right? These are the two things I'm looking for. Sienna is really both it's two examples of that. The first one is right here where I'm, I've got the vertical line going on the monthly chart and there's a green arrow pointing. We bought this on a break above of this long sideways pattern on the monthly. It went sideways and it was a low ADX pattern on the monthly and it was actually a low ADX pattern on the weekly. And then when it kicked into gear and broke out, we were buyers and that was actually right before the market dropped in 2018, but it didn't matter because uh, there was so much strength behind the move and so much power behind it. It ended up moving up about 50%. And so we had a really good trade in that. And then it went sideways for a couple of years and we've been out of it. And then all of a sudden earlier this year, when things got kind of ugly, um, we noticed this was holding up pretty well. And then when it came back up, this is this other version where there's strong ADX on the monthly, and then you pull back on the monthly and consolidate, and you have low ADX on the uh, weekly chart, and then you emerge out of this and break out. So we bought this somewhere in here, mid 40, 45 to 47, something like that. And uh, we've been scaling out of it. We still have a position in it, but we have taken profits along the way. I just think this is a really good example because it shows uh, the low ADX pattern on the monthly, and it shows the higher ADX pattern where you get a pullback on the monthly. So that was a good uh, example. And I want to make sure you guys understood those two different looks. So anyway, a lot of information here. Please give me some feedback on this. Hope you can understand where I'm coming from and what I'm looking for. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.